Our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. Listen for the word of the Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with, with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers, Lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom. For men. The word of the Lord. Over the last couple of weeks, Reverend Causey has spoken to us about Job and Job's plea to God. We have heard about how Job was a righteous man, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. That is what God had to say about him. God said there was no one like him on earth. We have heard how God spoke to Satan about Job. How God allowed bad things to happen to this good man. And how Job continued to praise God. We have heard about Job's three friends who accused him of wrongdoing simply because he was struck by God. You remember his friends, the ones with the familiar sounding names, Eliphaz, Bildad, and so far. They weren't from Brunswick County. They were from a place and time where if you had something bad happen to you, it's because you did something wrong and God was punishing you. That is the world they lived in. But Job was blameless. He was a good man. And yet, God allowed Satan to take his wealth, his health, and his children. Satan took everything but his life and left him covered from head to foot in painful sores. So his friends naturally thought, Job must have done something really terrible. That was all that would make sense to him. So Job appeals to a higher court. He proclaims that he will take his case to the Supreme Court, the ultimate judge, God himself. Job declares his innocence and pleads not guilty. Then God speaks up. God tells Job that he is not God. God gets real clear. God asks, Did you lay the foundations of the earth? Can you make it rain? Do you control the lightning? Can you protect yourself from the lion? Or protect the lioness? Can you feed the lion cubs? Can you feed the birds when they're young, cry out in hunger? 
God does all these wondrous things. God knows how to design a body to work and live and function. God made the mind you have so that it's able to understand what I'm saying and assign meanings and words. I went to UNC Wilmington and earned a bachelor's of science degree in biology. And I learned a lot of incredibly complicated things in physics class about how the world works. But we didn't learn the foundations of the earth. I wasn't there when God stretched out the lines to measure the dimensions of the world. I have no clue where the cornerstone is. I learned a lot about life and the processes that go on in cells and tissues and organs. The way that everything works together to allow all the different processes to work. It's amazing. God designed all of it. We can't even understand how it all works. The things that God is capable of are greater than what we are able to understand. God reminds Job of this. In no uncertain terms, God tells Job that he is not God. Jesus had to do a similar thing with James and John. They were trying to figure out how to be the best and ask Jesus for a favor. What they asked for, they had no idea. What they wanted was to be given glory. They wanted to be the people who were looked up to. They wanted to be the center of attention, the big shots, the most important VIPs next to God. In fact, they may have wanted to be just one step below God, if not higher. But Jesus turns that up that idea upside down. It is not honor and glory that you should seek for yourself. What you should seek is not for yourself at all. What we should all do is seek to give the glory and honor where it belongs, to God. We tend to be like James and John thinking of ourselves, worrying about what we think will make us happy. Jesus tells us what will make us truly happy. Help someone else. When we serve each other instead of ourselves, we make all involved better. It gives us a good feeling to help others. When we are not only helping others and in turn ourselves. The person being helped is given what they need. That's called a win-win. <coughs> when this happens, we are not only helping others and in turn ourselves, but Jesus says, by doing for others, we are doing for him. So by serving someone else, we help them, we help ourselves, and we help God. That's a win-win-win. When we instead challenge God by claiming self-righteously that we are in the right, and therefore God is in the wrong, like Job did, we need to refocus our perspective. When Job cried out to the Lord that he was innocent, he was not wrong from his perspective. The problem was that his perspective came from a position of privilege. Job saw the world as owing him something because of what he had done. Job thought that because he had followed the rules God set, that he would be protected from all danger and rewarded handsomely for his efforts. But that's not exactly how God works. God doesn't reward all our good deeds and punish all our bad ones. Thank you, God. In 
If God did work that way, Job would have had a much more pleasant life. And we would all have much worse lives. Okay, I can't speak for you. I'm just guessing that you may have done or left undone some things that you wish you had. I know I have many faults. If God were keeping score, I'm afraid I would have already lost. Thankfully, though, that's not how God works. God can do more miraculous things than we can even imagine. God can make it so that the least little seemingly insignificant act for someone else can be more important than a lifetime of our sin. All that evil sin, God can wash away without you doing anything to earn it. God can and has freely given you your forgiveness. Because of that gift, you are free. You are free to give to others and help anyone who is in need. You can choose to help yourself, or you can choose to help God by helping God's people. Let us remember that we are not God. Job was a blameless and upright man, but he became self-righteous by thinking that it was all his doing that made him deserve reward. We are not God and don't know what God knows. We don't know why blessings are bestowed to some while curses are on others. We don't know the reasons God has for the existence of evil in this world. We don't know the foundations of the earth and where the cornerstone is. What we do know is that God is the one who laid it. We know that God is in charge of designing the world and how it works. We also know that we have been blessed with a great many things. And therefore, we are able to be a blessing to others. Since God has blessed us, shouldn't we in turn bless each other and all of God's creation? Those who are able to please stand and join me in the affirmation. Today we'll be using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God.
ever merciful and always loving God. We turn to you for hope and salvation today. Hear our prayers, O God. Give us the faith and the patience to hear your answer. God of all nations, we pray for those in Afghanistan who are voting today. Help that fledgling democracy to thrive, dear Lord. We pray, too, for those who have already voted and those preparing to vote in our own local elections. We pray for all of the candidates willing to serve as commissioners or representatives. Call us to exercise the great privilege of voting in this great nation. God of all travelers, we pray for those desperately trying to get into our country. Keep them safe and keep our border patrol compassionate and safe as they enforce our laws. May we be welcoming to immigrants who risk so much to dream the American dream that we too often take for granted. Ever healing God, we pray for our loved ones who are hurting today. Be known in hospital rooms and on operating tables, in nursing homes and in therapy sessions, in prison cells and in 12-step programs, even in hospice beds. We pray for those who are battling cancer and for those living with Alzheimer's or AIDS or diabetes or depression or addictions. May our prayers and our visits be part of your healing process, dear Lord. We continue, O oh Lord, to pray for the victims of the recent hurricanes that have destroyed so many homes and so many families. Bless the BFA and the Red Cross and Samaritan's Purse and the other helping agencies trying to restore hope. We pray for the thousands visiting Ocean Isle for the Oyster Festival this weekend. Hear our prayers for the police and the sheriff's deputies and the highway patrol and the first responders who keep our guests and our families safe. Inspiring God, we pray for those who lead us in worship. Especially today, we thank you for T. Worrell, our seminary intern. Bless our choirs as they bless us. Teach our Sunday school teachers and our Bible study leaders as they teach us. We pray for our deacons and our elders and for all of our hard-working committees. Thank you, God, for the faith-building gift of prayer. May we exercise this vital discipline every day. Hear us now, Heavenly Father, as we remember the prayer Jesus taught to his first disciples. Make us more faithful and more winsome disciples today as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. dedication this morning is hymn number 215, What Wondrous Love Is This? <laughs>
service here is ended, but our service to the community continues. So I urge you to go forward, to sing on about the good news that you've heard today, that Christ's love covers all of our sins, that Job was an upright man, and Job needed to be put in his place by the power of God, by the wisdom of God. So go forth, my friends, share good news with all you encounter in the week ahead. Help them to know that they too are loved and forgiven. May the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of Almighty God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you in this place, wherever we're called to serve. Amen.